chills, right? Okay. Why do we love superheroes? So a year ago, uh, my sister had a baby, and I was super excited. And um, it seems like since then, I've developed this sense of radar, and I constantly see toddlers walking around with Spider-Man backpacks and Superman pajamas. And I find myself, I just can't wait until my nephew's old enough so that we can have kind of a superhero-themed birthday party and we can all make cakes. So I've told you that already, put in my reservation. When he's five, that's what we're doing. So why do we love superheroes? Superheroes save us, right? They come in and solve our problems, especially those wicked, <coughs> naughty problems that just kind of make us look like deer in the headlights, right? And they do it with this sense of valor and kind of duty. We admire superheroes. Some of us want to be superheroes. They don't give up on us either, right? They come in, they see the disaster we've created, they conquer evil, they put things back in order, and then they step back and they leave us to learn from our mistakes and see what we do with the future, right? Superheroes occupy this kind of world where the normal state of things, it's orderly and safe, kind of predictable, right, kind of 1950s. Um, and they also offer us a model of leadership that's kind of comforting, right? Because we know that no matter what sort of chaos we inflict on ourselves, there's gonna be someone with special powers willing to step forward and come in and save the day, right? This is superheroes. Here's the problem. We don't live in film and we don't live in comic books. And our world could hardly be described as orderly or calm, right? So the model of leadership that superheroes offer us is probably limited. And we probably all know this, we sort of wish for a savior and the savior doesn't seem to be coming. So what if instead there were superpowers that all of us could adopt, each and every one of us, to affect a new model of leadership? That's what I'm here to talk about, a new model of leadership. We call it leadership. It's collaborative and anybody, anybody, who masters the six superpowers, seen right here, can practice it. So I'll be your tour guide as we take a quick jaunt through these six superpowers. So the first one has to do with where we look for information that helps us solve our problems. When we adopt a wide angle view, we look all around us for people, talent, resources, ideas, information, ways we can do our work better. And since we understand that most of these resources are shared, we also look for ways that we can contribute back. When we think about the tools and methods that we seek, we look far afield from our professional industries or our typical associations, like Jane McGonigal, who uses games and gaming technologies to help people improve their health, right? So when we adopt a wide angle point of view, we can do and be extraordinary. The second superpower has to do with our relationships with one another. We call it hyper-networked, or maybe hyper-networkedness. So let's talk about networks. Networks are not boards, committees, groups, right? If I asked you to list your networks, what would you say? List the people in your networks. How would you do that? You'd have kind of a hard time, right? Because you'd be thinking, do you mean my social networks or my professional networks? They're hard, it's hard to do that, right? This is because networks are flexible. They're a flexible architecture. They're living and breathing. They change all the time. They can be big, they can be small, they can be tight, they can be loose. They're very different than traditional hierarchies, which is a different kind of structure. Networks allow different people to connect and bring different skills at different times. Ultimately, they're more resilient than traditional hierarchies because they have no permanent membership and no single center of power. So one thing that makes networks particularly effective is diversity. Now you might be used to thinking of diversity in terms of language diversity, ethnicity, cultural diversity, gender diversity, but there are lots of different kinds of diversity. So some of you, borrowing from Lenny Guineer here for a minute, some of you may have seen Apollo 13, the movie. Some of you may even remember Apollo 13. Um, so there's this really dramatic scene, and I know you'll remember this if you saw the movie, 
where the astronauts are coming back, right? They're, they're in the capsule, they're coming back, and all of a sudden they realize they're breathing in carbon dioxide. Potential catastrophe. This is the genesis of that phrase, remember that, Houston, we have a problem, right? That's this, okay. So there's a momentary bit of panic, communication back and forth, and then the NASA administrator quickly assembles a group of people. And these people are designers, process technicians, engineers, and they bring different skill sets, different points of view. They occupy different rungs on the NASA hierarchy, right? He puts them in a room and then gives them exactly the same materials that the astronauts have in flight. And he pleads with them to avert disaster. And they do. And that's the power of diversity inside of networks. So the third superpower might be my favorite. We call it radical openness. And it has to do with the idea that the internet has enabled us to connect in ways that we couldn't even imagine a decade ago. It's made our traditional organizations more porous, and it's enabled whole new ways to organize. And I guess, you know, the key point here is that for the first time in human history, we have the ability to organize at a mass scale, globally, completely outside of traditional organizations and institutions. So think about that for a second. Think of all the traditional organizations and institutions you're a part of, schools, governments, we now have the ability to organize those things without those traditional structures. It's a profound change in a single generation. And as a result, we see new kinds of entities arising, like Skillshare, which helps people learn, but isn't a school, or Kiva, which makes loans to entrepreneurs, but isn't a bank, or ThreadUp, which connects growing kids with new clothes, but isn't a store, right? This is only the beginning. Relentless experimentation. It seems easy enough, but here's the thing. We live in a world that's hard to predict and nobody's got a road map. So we need to build radical experimentation, relentless experimentation, into our DNA, into our schools, into our homes, into our workplaces, into our communities because that's the only way we're gonna invent our way to the future, right? Some of you may know you, Shahidi. It's a platform that was developed during the Kenyan elections in 2007. It's an open source mapping platform, a little like the one that Haley described, and it allows people with cell phones or access to the internet to post activities that are occurring in real time. And as a result of you, Shahidi, we could see when we looked at this collective intelligence about the Kenyan elections, where there was violence, where there were irregularities, and all of a sudden, a whole world of relentless experimenters decided this was a great thing, and they essentially founded a new field called crisis mapping. So since this time, we've seen you, Shahidi, play a key role in Haiti, where it connected people with food and shelter and water, after the, after the hurricane. We saw it play a key role in Japan after the earthquake and tsunami. Um, it kind of facilitated rescue and relocation services. And it's been used in dozens of countries since to make elections more transparent. For anyone who's tracking Syria right now, there's an application called Syria Tracker, and Yushahidi is its foundation. So I think that if the Yushahidi community can experiment in the face of political violence, hurricanes, tsunamis, earthquake, so can we. The fifth superpower is about the kind of contribution you can make as an organization or in a, in, as an individual to things that really matter. This is CloudGate. It's Anish Kapoor's contribution to Millennium Park and to the city of Chicago. He called it CloudGate. But within five minutes of installation, Chicagoans were calling it the bean. You may know it as the bean. It is a piece of public art, but it's also much more than that. It's a huge amount of fun. I don't know who's uh, been here, some of you may have seen it, but the thing is it's round and it's got a reflective surface. And so when you walk up to it, you're kind of looking for your reflection in front of you, but it's actually not in front of you, it's kind of to the side. And everyone else is doing the same thing. So at some point, you're looking at the person standing next to you in the reflection that's in front of you, right? 
And it opens these marvelous conversations, and the next thing you know, everyone's pulling out their cameras, and complete strangers in languages that aren't even common are turning headstands and laying down on the ground and taking photos, and it is a remarkable thing. It creates connections between people. It's a contribution that really matters. And when we exercise this superpower, we can make contributions to important things that are just as magical. The sixth and final superpower is about helping more people develop more superpowers, right? The millennials are sort of poised for a world of leadership. They've grown up hacking their futures. And our generation and people who came before us, we hold the kind of wisdom that really only comes with experience. So we need to find ways to bridge those gaps and to work collectively to sort of regenerate ourselves, right? To, to endow more people going forward with more superpowers. And if we manage to do this, we'll be unstoppable. So that's leadership. These are the six superpowers. Wide angle view, hyper networkedness, radical openness, relentless experimentation, unique value, and the ability to regenerate. So this leadership thing, as a reminder, it's collaborative, and anyone, anyone who can master the six superpowers can practice it. So it turns out, that's you. It turns out that we are the leaders we've been waiting for. Every single person in this room. It's up to us to be superheroes, every day, out loud, in public, and together. So, the question is, are we ready to embrace these superpowers? Are we ready for a world of leadership? <laughs>